Hey everybody, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. He is so wonderful, faithful, and true. Oh my gosh, is he amazing and wonderful, and his love is overwhelming. His grace, his mercies are new every morning. Praise God. Oh my Lord, praise you, Jesus. Don't let that self-pity spirit in. Sorry, these tears are not tears of sorrow. These are tears of joy. Praise God, I haven't had them. I don't know if I've ever had them. And if I have, I don't remember. But don't you let that self-spirit, that I mean, that spirit of self-pity in. You cannot let that spirit in. It has got such a root to it. And there is so much that branches off of that. You let that in and you're in trouble. It has taken three years, no, two years, two years, two or three years, um, to get away from it. Praise God for his mercies are new every morning. Thank God for his deliverance. There's so much he has set me free from. Praise you, Jesus. There is an article I posted if you scroll down on my page. It's also public, or you can go scroll down to the video that I where I read it um, as well. And it tells you everything that self-pity is, okay? And uh, understanding it will help you to break free of it. Don't let that foothold of self-pity in, okay? Here's the thing. Self-pity sets in when we start to dwell on what somebody else did to us. Oh, so-and-so said this. And so-and-so is saying this. And they're saying this. And they're saying that. And uh, we play victim. Stop playing victim. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It is so much bigger than that. Did Jesus do that? Woe is me. Imagine now. For one second. Imagine. If Jesus was woe is me. Oh, Peter. I don't understand Thomas. He's always doubting. Oh, Paul, I don't get it. Peter is denying me. He denied me three times. All my followers left me when I was on that cross. Oh, woe is me. Now imagine if Jesus, as he walked with his disciples, was, Oh, they're persecuting me. They're spitting on me. They're calling me names, and they called me this and that. And they're not letting me do my father's work. Do you think he would have gotten anywhere? No. The spirit of self-pity is a spirit, and it's a sin. That gets us nowhere. It's not about you, and it's not about me. Our lives don't belong to us anymore once we commit our lives to Christ. They belong to Him. Completely sold out for Christ. When I read that article that I'm telling you to scroll down to read if you haven't already or watch the video where I um, speak about it, it was like I was hit with a bus. It was like, I just started crying. It was like, I can't even explain it. I don't even have the words to explain it. And I cried out and I said, no, Lord, no, Lord, no, Lord. I don't want that. And that very second, I began to cry out for forgiveness. And he set me free. Self-pity is a choice. It's a choice to dwell in what others are doing to us. Maybe you should turn on a light so you can see me better, huh? So it's not about me. No, 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 no. Let's see what I can do, shall we? There we go. Oh my lord, he's good. No, it's not about you. And it's not about me. We need to say no and stop. Don't do the woe is me and play victim. Yes, okay, so they hurt you, so they came at you, so they falsely accused you and gossiped about you and spoke evil about you. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever done that to somebody else? This is so much bigger than that. In those times when people begin to come at us and we feel that sorrow or that self-pity or however you want to explain it, because I don't have the right words, we need to start giving praise in that situation. Because God is using those trials and persecutions to grow us 
in our integrity, in our character, in our love, to help us to endure, to strengthen us. It's in that moment we have a choice to make. We can choose to play victim. The woe is me, poor me attitude. And delve into drinking and alcohol, or delve into food, or delve into buying things, or delve into watching TV, or delve into, you know, worldly stuff. Go out and impulse buy, or delve into going and talking to every single person we meet. Or, we can give God glory. And, we can ask Him to show us our part in the situation. Praise God. I messed up big time. And I fell big time into self-pity. And I thought everything was my fault. And I took it personally. <laughs> and yes, I spoke about it. But God is so gracious and merciful. And he has forgiven me. That's over now. It's not even in me anymore. Praise God. Self-pity is gone. And so is a lot of other things. Actually, a lot more left than today. Praise God. So we can choose to delve into stuff that's of the world and stuff that won't get us anywhere and stay in self-pity. Or we can choose to rise above, not give that wicked spirit, that wicked thing a, a put hold in our life, not even open the door to it, and instead we can choose to praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for this situation. Thank you, Lord, that they came against me. Thank you, Father, that they that they were not nice or kind to me. It proves that I'm yours. Thank you, Father, that you're working on their heart and you're working on my heart. Thank you, Father, that you will complete the good work you started in us on the day of your return. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our Lord and you came to live for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us. Thank you, Lord. May you bless them, Lord Jesus. I just ask that you bless them, Father, that you, that you just touch them with your love and kindness. Praise you, Jesus. We can choose to praise them. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of Corey Ten Boom's sister, Betsy. When they were in the concentration camp, they could choose, Betsy and Corey Ten Boom could have chosen in the when they were in the prison cells by, and one was by themselves completely, which was Corey Ten Boom was by herself. They could have chosen to just gone into self-pity, but they didn't. Even when Corey Ten Boom became very sick, she didn't. She started praying and God was showing her ways to be thankful. And then when she was in the concentration camp, she was having trouble being thankful. They were in a, they had walked, been given a place, their, their um, barracks where they were put to, to sleep. Um, they had, I think, three rows of beds and you had to crawl over people to get to your bed. And they were on top of each other, um, stacked. And it was full of lice had lice, I do believe, if I remember correctly, and there was so much. It smelled really badly. The straw was was rotten. Um, it was just so much for them. They were being beaten if they didn't do something the right way, or you know. And Corey Ten Boom began to complain, and Betsy said, "No, Corey. No. We need to give thanks." And Betsy was like, well, what do I have to give thanks for? And Betsy said, let's pray. And Betsy gave thanks for those very things. The lice and the, you know, the people and the, the fact that the lice kept the security guards away. They didn't come into the barracks. So Corey Ten Boom and Betsy could share the gospel. They could share the love of Jesus with people. And people were becoming saved and giving their lives to Christ in this place. Their souls were all that mattered. See, that's what we need to be more concerned about. Not poor me playing victim. We need to be concerned about other souls. Asking the Lord, what's this happening for? You know, just giving thanks and he will show us. I did so much wrong in my life and I'm 41 years old now. I wish I could have gotten this when I was 17. I'm 
I'm 41, and for the most part, I'm alone. I don't have very many friends. But I wouldn't have even wanted to be friends with me. Poor me. I, I've met people like that. I wanted nothing to do with them. In fact, I ran. Because they changed the atmosphere. Their whole countenance was... And you'd say something to them about how wonderful it is. And they'd be like, yeah, maybe for you. Hm. Wish I, my life was like that. I couldn't get a smile out of them. Not even a laugh. They were always looking for something negative to say. So no, I wouldn't have wanted to be friends with me either. I praise God. Because Joyful is back. It's not about you, and it's not about me. It's about our lovely, wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. It's about others, putting others first and loving them. Oh, well, so what? We were falsely accused, so was Jesus. He understands. Oh, well, so what? They spoke evil of us. They spoke evil about Jesus. He understands. It's not about trying to find our security in others. It's not about trying to be fulfilled by somebody else. We can't find what we need in somebody else. We can't put those demands and expectations on people. We can't. We can't expect somebody else to make us happy or somebody else to, to lift us up. We can't expect that. We can't demand that either. There's only one who can help us, and that's Jesus Christ. And he is our best friend, our very best friend. He's the only one that gets my heart. So remember, you got a choice to, to make. Are you going to play victim? Are you going to wallow in self-pity and do the poor me and allow a self-pity spirit in? Can't afford to let that in. Or are you going to choose to give thanks in all situations and begin to praise Jesus Christ and love and just bless your enemies, bless those who have come against you instead of playing victim. Be a child of God, because that's who you are. I'm talking to believers, so if you haven't given your life to Christ and you feel led to, and drawn to him, I urge you now, I encourage you to confess your sins. Confess your sins to God and ask Jesus into your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to come. It's the best decision you'll ever make. I'm not going to promise you that we're always going to be happy. Because you know what? We're not always happy. Happiness is circumstantial. But joy is everlasting. Things aren't always going to go well. In fact, Jesus asks us, to, tells us we need to pick up our crosses. That we're to suffer with him. Take part in his, partake in his suffering. It's not about us. We're humans. We're still going to get sick. As Paul said, we've not yet done away with our sinful nature, so we'll still, you know, stumble every now and again. But don't let that self-pity spirit in. Don't deliberately sin, don't habitually sin, and let God teach you and mold you. And let's learn to keep this mouth shut. I think I've messed up enough by talking about problems. No more. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm a new person. Because of Jesus Christ my Lord. And it's time I lived it. It's time I was a light that shined. It's time I was a beacon for Jesus. And not that the enemy wins. There's no room in my heart for anyone but Jesus and his Holy Spirit to fulfill me in every way. I can't allow it. God is a, is a wonderful, wonderful Father. Faithful and true. We praise him. God bless all of you. And remember, don't let it in.